What's up YouTube, my name's Kenneth. Today we have an unboxing from Seven Towns and they sent me this box uh, and they contact me about their new product and it is the Rubik's Futuro Cube. So let's open it up. It's a pretty large bag, but we can see that there are two Rubik's Futuro Cubes inside. Let's um, go ahead and open this one up. Inside we have the cube and it looks like a very small USB cable. Anything else in there? Uh, that is it. So here's the Rubik's Futuro Cube. I don't know anything about this puzzle. I don't even know how to turn it on. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, read the instructions, play with it for a while, and I'll get back to you guys. So it's been a couple days and I've had a lot of time to play with the Rubik's Futuro Cube. I've really been enjoying it. It's a lot of fun and I want to show you guys how it works. So the first thing you got to do is you have to figure out how to turn it on. And uh, if you never had one and someone just hands it to you, you wouldn't uh, figure it out. It's kind of difficult just to turn on. Uh, you don't tap, with, tap on it. You don't shake it. What you have to do is you have to rotate it in a circular motion up and down, uh, but much faster than that. So here, I'll turn it on and it turns on. So anyway, that's how you turn on the puzzle. When it turns on, it goes right into a menu. And right now we're in the blue menu. You can tell because uh, each side looks blue. And each side represents a different app. And the side that's facing up is the app that's selected. And you can tap on the top side and it will open that app. So you can hear all the different games that are available. This one is called Snake. So if you tap on it, it will start the app. If you double tap, it'll tell you a little bit about the app, how to play, gives you some instructions or information, stuff like that. So if you tap on the side, it will go to the next um, menu. And so there's multiple menus. This is the blue one. I tapped on the side. Now we're on the green menu. The green menu has a bunch of multiplayer apps and it does have a couple um, single player ones as well. Now we're on the red menu. The red menu is mainly full of uh, utility type apps. Um, you can change the volume. So I'm not gonna show you all the apps because there's so many of them and it would take too long. But uh, let me show you some of my favorite ones. This one here is called Roadrunner and when you click on it, the object of this game is you wanna keep the white dot on top and the purple ones are kind of a tail. And so you wanna follow the white one and keep it on top. And so to start it, you tap. So here we go. So I have to follow it and keep it up on top. Anyway, it's a, it's a fun app. And of course it gives you a score at the end to see how well you did. So far my top score is 350 something. I forget what it was. Oops, I ran, I was going too slow. Now, whenever you're in an app and you want to get out of the app, you have to make that circular motion again and it'll get you to the menu. So let's do that. So another fun app I like is Snake. And um, Snake is like the classic um, computer game. Uh, and I used to play Snake a lot. And basically what happens is you're the snake moving across and it always wants to go up. So if I turn the cube, the snake goes back up. And if I turn the cube, it goes up. And what you want to do is you want to eat these... Uh, these flashing dots and when you do the snake grows and gets longer and eventually it's hard because you the snake starts getting uh, close and you might run into your own body and if that happens uh, the game is over so you have to be a little careful with that so the snake keeps getting longer and longer so now you can see the snake is uh, getting much longer and it's starting to get uh, difficult I almost ran into myself there and it's getting much harder now Oh, ran into myself. So you can see that's the snake, the whole path my snake was when it ran into itself. So anyway, that's snake. Snake's kind of fun. So I want to show you guys how easy it is to connect two of these Futuro cubes together and play a multiplayer game. All you have to do is go to the game you want to play on one of the puzzles and select it. it tells you to it's waiting for the other player and the other player has to find the same game on uh, his Futuro cube and select it. and it says connection established and um, the game starts. So, uh, and it's as easy as that and it's very responsive. As soon as uh, the player selects where he wants to go, the other player is notified almost right away. So uh, it works really well. I'm impressed with how quickly and seamless the connection process is uh, for multiplayer. So they did a really good job 
uh, with multiplayer. One of the, my favorite features of the Rubik's Futuro Cube is that they have an SDK, which stands for a software development kit, uh, for software developers to create their own apps. And of course, I uh, develop software for a living, and so it's something I was really excited about. So let me show you some of the apps that I've created or that I'm working on right now. You can see there's the blue menu, this is the green menu, this is the red menu, and this menu I call the colorful menu. And the colorful menu is full of apps that I'm either developing, uh, I've, I've made from scratch, or I'm um, working on that maybe they started with and I'm editing. So um, I wanted to show you first their Rubik's Cube app because that's probably one you guys might want to download. And uh, I'll, let me talk about that first. So here, let me show you their Rubik's Cube app. So here's their Rubik's Cube. You can see it's got uh, a bunch of colors. Uh, the colors aren't Rubik's color, so right away I'm, I wasn't that pleased with it. When you tap on a side, it'll turn clockwise 90 degrees, and when you do it, there's a very subtle ad animation, and you, it makes it kind of look like it's turning, which I think uh, really kind of sells the fact that it's a Rubik's Cube. I guess a major problem with the Rubik's Cube app is it's really awkward to use, but it's actually a little easier to use than the Touch Cube. Uh, because with the Rubik's Touch Cube, you were making these swiping movements, and um, it, the puzzle would never keep up. You could only do about one turn a second. And so it was kind of difficult to use. But with this, you can, you can tap pretty quickly. And so I can tap, tap, and I can quickly make a, uh, a here's the checkerboard pattern. So that's the Rubik's Cube app. Um, let me show you some of the apps that I created. So here we are on the colorful side and uh, this is the Rubik's Cube app um, that we just played with. Um, but here's the first app that I created. Let me show you what this one is. So this is the Color Picker app. It's the first app I created. And uh, as you can see, there are three sides with colors. You got the red side, the blue side, and the green side. And when you tap on a side, this uh, tap on the red side, you can see that this middle red dot is getting a little brighter in intensity and in the middle here we have added red to the middle and so what you can do is you can start mixing colors so we can add a lot of red and then start adding a little bit of green and red plus green a lot of red and a little green makes orange um, and so we can brighten up the red and, and give it maybe a little bit more green and now we have a nice looking orange and so using this I was able to find better colors, in my opinion, for the uh, Rubik's Cube app. Anyway, I got kind of carried away with this app and I started making kind of hidden features. One hidden feature is if you tap this side five times, you uh, change into a different mode and it works the same way as the other mode. So these colors, when you mix the center colors here, you get this color here and it's orange. So we can start adding blue and now it's kind of turning purple and you can take away a color by tapping it from the bottom and so we can take away some red and now we, we can mix just blue and green and um, we're making a nice looking teal anyway using this I was able to find colors I liked better uh, than the uh, Rubik's Cube app so let me now show you my Rubik's Cube app so this is my Rubik's Cube app and it works like the other Rubik's Cube app, except for it's got much better colors. And I'm a little disappointed with uh, the way the camera is picking up these colors because to me, these are the colors of a Rubik's Cube. And you can see uh, when, it, when it's all scrambled up, now to me it looks like a Rubik's Cube because my mind is so used to seeing you know green, white, and red. I see a corner here, this is a one corner piece. Before it would be like green and purple and, and, and teal. And I, you know that doesn't look like anything to me, but with these colors, it looks now like a Rubik's cube. So in my opinion, I've kind of fixed the uh, Rubik's cube app, which uh, is kind of fun. The other feature I uh, I added to the Rubik's cube app is uh, once you go through all the trouble of solving it, you kind of want to feel like you've accomplished something, like yay, you've done well. So watch what happens now when I solve it. You can hear it uh, gives a bit of a fanfare, uh, like a, uh, a a little bit of a celebration noise. I think also I'm going to uh, add an animation into it next, so that when it when you solve it, the whole cube you know glows a little bit, like you've you know you've done something interesting. So anyway, that's that's a feature I want to add. And so like I said, 
um, I'm really happy that they've released this SDK so that uh, programmers like me can go in and make adjustments and change it to however they want it to work. So what are my final thoughts on the Rubik's Futuro Cube? Well, I'm really pleased with it. Um, from just a consumer standpoint, um, there are a lot of apps to play with. Some are better than others, but there are some fun ones. I really like the Roadrunner and I really like Tetris or whatever they call it. But there are so many. In fact, there are some that I've only really glanced at. I haven't had a real chance to really try to understand the rules of. Um, but uh, besides that, uh, I think uh, the multiplayer works really well. It's really easy to connect to and start playing. I think um, from a cubing standpoint, uh, I think the downside is that the, the cube app definitely needs a little bit of improvement. And even if they do improve it too much, it won't be uh, that great. It's not going to replace a Rubik's Cube. Um, that's for sure. I actually think it's actually a little bit better than the touch cube, but um, not that much better. So it's still kind of awkward to play with. But you know, if if all this was was a Rubik's Cube app, then it wouldn't be that great. There's so much more to it, which makes it, I think, a lot of fun. Um, the last standpoint to look at it from is a, uh, a software developer. If you're a software developer, I highly recommend the Rubik's Futuro Cube. Using the SDK has been a pleasure. It's been really fun to program. It's a lot of fun to write some code, click a button, and that code zipped over to the, the Futuro Cube and you're testing it right away. It's in your hand. Um, it, it really is a, a fun way to code. And so from that standpoint, I highly recommend the Futuro Cube. It's really been a blast and the SDK is really easy and it's easy to learn. It's all C-based uh, scripting languages. So it's it's really great. Uh, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing and first thoughts. I hope to make some more videos on the Rubik's Futuro Cube in the Futuro. And uh, I hope to show you some apps. And if you guys have ideas for fun apps I should develop, definitely leave a comment. Uh, the apps I do develop, I'll post on my website, kennethbrandy.com. Um, you can click the annotation to get to it at the end of the video, or you can click the link in the description. So that's pretty much it. I do come out with new videos at least every other week, but lately I've been doing weekly videos on the weekends. So stay tuned for the next video. Uh, of course, you can click subscribe, and that way you'll be notified when the next video comes. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and of course, have a great day. You might have noticed this video went pretty long. I actually had another five minutes of like extra footage of me showing some of the apps I've already created. If you're really interested in seeing that, I made it an unlisted video. You can click the annotation on the screen or the link in the description. So that's pretty much it. Thanks guys for watching and of course, have a great day. Oops. <laughs>